Really? Ladies and gentlemen in attendance, boxing fans joining us across the nation on Fox, and sports fans joining us around the world. We welcome you to the city of brotherly love and the four state spectrum here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Don King Productions and Miller Light. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, the chairman, former Philadelphia Eagle star and Hall of Famer, Chuck Bednarek. Commissioners Andy DePaul, George Boquetto, and the Honorable Event Paid Executive Director, Greg Sir. Positions at ringside, Dr. Paul Steinberg, Dr. Alan Brackup, and Dr. Cato Lorenzen. Timekeeper at the bell, Jimmy Mina, keeping down to the knockdowns, Jim Bruce. Introducing our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, Ron Greenlee, Carol Polis, and Adelaide Triplin. Introducing our referee in charge of this bout, and he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Frank Cappuccino. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, a heavyweight special attraction scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing first on my left, hiding out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing gold trunks with black trim, and hailing from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He weighed in at 224 pounds, he is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with 20 wins, no losses, two no contests, with six wins coming by way of knockout. He is representing the long-time fighting family tradition. Please welcome the IBF number four heavyweight contender and the current USBA heavyweight champion, introducing the undefeated Buster Mathis. Junior! And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, really needing no introduction the world over. Entering the ring wearing his traditional black trunks and fighting out of Catskill, New York. He went in at 219 pounds with a record of 42 wins, only one defeat, with 36 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the youngest ever to win a heavyweight title, and the last to unify in the ring by beating the champions of the WBC, WBA, and IBF. Currently ranked the number one contender, and continuing his quest to regain his titles, please welcome the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the one, the only, Mike Tyson! Once again, a referee in charge, Greg Cappuccino. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions. Protect your sight at all times. Touch gloves. Well, for Buster Mathis Jr., his father, the one-time heavyweight contender, Buster Mathis Sr., who died of a heart attack three months ago, gave his son, Sean O'Grady, a word of advice about intimidation. Yeah, he said, even if you can't be a champ, you can make a lot of money. This, this business isn't always about hitting or getting hit. Get in there, box, and move. Walk around a fighter like Mike Tyson. Don't be intimidated. And here we go, and Mathis just falling down, not being struck by Tyson, who himself missed on a left uppercut to begin things here. He ran right at Mike Tyson, much like Peter McNeely did, which he thought was interesting. Said Mike didn't handle pressure too well. Well, this is interesting because that's like a lamb walking to the slaughter. He ran to the slaughter. Well, he was surprised that Peter McNeely was able to back up on Mike Tyson, and that's what he's trying to do. Put him back on his heels. A fighter doesn't have as much power backing up. Oh, and another missed uppercut by Mike Tyson. One of the things that the strategy involved with Buster Mathis Jr. tonight, the defensive, and again, Tyson continues to miss. And missing again, and missing again. And Mathis lands. It takes more out of a fighter to swing and miss than to swing and hit. Yeah, his own body would have to stop the punch as opposed to the other body stopping it for him. And 
He said he was a good slipper. So far, he's lived up to it. Mike was a bit wild in the Peter McNeely's by back in August. Nothing much in terms of evaluation game there. I think tonight there won't be an evaluation. But you know, in those punches of that Peter McNeely fight, he missed many times like he's done the first part of this round. Well, by pinning Tyson against the ropes, he almost guarantees he'll last the round, especially with those 224 pounds. Tyson connects right there. And, and Mathis comes back with the right uppercut. Mathis is trying to say so close that Mike can't wind up with any of those big bombs and hit him. Exactly. So far, it's worked. Do you like the strategy? So far, it's not bad. Jumping in, jumping out, pressing Mike, staying inside. We'll see what happens when he gets hit, though. Body punches. There's a shot by Mike Tyson with the left. You know, as the buster you know, said, I have to get his respect uh, early. So I'm going to go in with a barrage in the early part of this fight, and I think he has done that. And he has done a nice job of slipping on the inside, Buster has. He said that was the most underrated part of this game, the slipping. Yes. I have seen him in fights before where he wasn't slipping, where he did get hit. But tonight, he's doing a good job slipping. Tyson missing again with the left uppercut. Tyson really trying to swing from right, break. Stop the third punching. row. Step back, Buster. Just briefly, a moment ago, Mike switched to south one through like a right jab, which I thought was interesting. Well, it's not too hard right now to discern the early strategy by Buster Mathis. Oh, yeah, smother the power, get inside get of it. Get him loose. What you get him loose. can't do with a fighter like Mike Tyson, his hooks are too big. You can't go away from him. All he does is extend his hooks. Yeah. We have Bobby Chaz and Sean O'Grady and James Brown, Kevin Harlan ringside at Philadelphia Spectrum. We are through with round one, and Buster Mathis has lost it. Mike Tyson is not sharp. Look at all these misses from him on the inside. Buster Mathis, there is a miss. Strike one, strike two. Buster Mathis doing a good job of rolling on that big belly that he has to try to avoid punches. Here comes Tyson now, connecting with the left jab and coming with the right one again. He is parted by Mathis. You notice that Mike this time, instead of coming out throwing hooks, come on, which, come on, get which Buster get under, came out jamming, setting up the jab. Even go, a short man go, can be effective with the jab. Mathis picked off some of Tyson's shots with his glove and made a miss with his movement. That's slipping we talked about before. And again, Tyson coming and missing again with the left hook. But swinging with a lot of power. Swinging and missing, Mike Tyson. Says that he is physically stronger now. Oh, a low blow from Buster Mathis. Mathis had to do something to take away that barrage from Mike Tyson. He didn't want to be intimidated. Bobby Chez, what about the size, the height of Mathis and Tyson going up against the guy almost shorter? Well, you know, that's a funny thing because I used to tell people, listen, if I ever go up to headway and I fought Mike, I'd get underneath Mike. He'd have to punch down at me, which is something he's not only not used to, but not as good at. And you're going to see some quick combinations by Mathis. There's the combination right there, and that's exactly what Mathis is doing. There is no quit in Buster Mathis. Game young man. And he's taking it to Mike Tyson. Tyson's the one trying to hold on. No one thought that go, Buster Mathis go. Jr. would last through round one. He has done that, and he is halfway through round two. Now, as we spoke about before, the jury's still out until he fights the top contender. Well, some of his detractors may say, wow, Buster Mathis is right, being handled the man points. Stop. Mike Come isn't on, the Buster. microphone. Tyson misses again with the left. From the top of the left. Then he comes with the right. And Mathis comes back. Game kid. Buster Mathis loves the uppercuts. There is his best punch. Watch on the inside. You turn your palm in and throw that uppercut. Both of them trading him. There's a body blow thrown with the heavy right by Mike Tyson. Mathis says he has more power in the right hand than the left. His style is moving his head, slipping inside, fast hands with sharp punches. See, this is one thing bigger taller fighters can't do to Mike. Can't get under the ground. That was the right shot to the thigh. Is on the hip bone. If you can hit your opponent on the hip bone and get away with it, he won't be able to walk as well. He'll notice that tomorrow. He can wait till tomorrow. He has to last tonight. Oh, 
He'll feel every punch tomorrow. Oh, and there is a nice right uppercut. And then Tyson counters himself. Now it's changing blows. And Mike is still missing a lot of big shots. Big clean shots at the big tall guys. Don't get out of the way of the little man seems to be able to. Tyson again missing with the left. Underneath. Top action in this battle between two big heavyweights, and I'm surprised that Buster Mathis Jr. has lasted into the third round against Mike Tyson. I think he's got Mike a little mad now. Matt, Mike seems to have a little bit different attitude. He's got to work him behind the jab. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Mike Tyson's to step back and jab. Yeah, they're telling you between rounds. Jay Bright saying five, six, seven punch combinations behind the jab. Twice with the right. Oh, and Mathis felt that right there, and again he plows into Tyson in the ropes. Tyson said, "No matter what happens tonight, trust me, I'm going to give you something special." Stop punching. He's giving Buster Mathis a lot special. Mathis has been crowded. Mathis has been slipping punches. Mathis has been ducking, and it's caused Tyson to miss numerous times on. Big, wild shots. Well, they're very happy in the corner of Buster Mathis. They know that Mike Tyson has 27 KOs in the first three rounds. So you have to get past those first three. Joey Ferriello in his corner. Frank Cappuccino separating the two. They're staying close. Down low once again, yeah. but the right uppercut goes Buster Mathis. Stay close. Turn into a little bit of a wall. Duck, 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 come inside, hold on. Duck, 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 throw some punches, hold on. It's going to become a little bit of a wall now. Now, this is the first time that Tyson has had Mathis up against the ropes. Body punches, and Mathis trying to fight his way out of it. Oh, you can hear him, too. Oh. And a miss by Tyson. Mike's loading up a little too much. Buster can see some of them coming. He's getting out of the way of most of them. Frank Cappuccino. Oh, Tyson oh. with the right uppercut right there. See what Mike's doing? He's stepping now. He's coming in and uh, stepping off and firing the uppercut, waiting for Buster to duck. Get back, Buster. Get back, Buster. Get back, Buster. Come up with the shots. Let's see again by Ducky. Yeah, trying to get the angle is Tyson. You use that right foot and pivot. Swing around on your opponent's side. And then oh, he's got a right uppercut. Oh, the right uppercut. And down goes Mathis. See, he stepped back and did it again. Stepped oh. off and around. And ripped that uppercut to where Mathis was ducking eight, right into it. Nine, ten. He didn't beat the count. A devastating right uppercut. Two of them by Mike Tyson. And he is knocked down Buster Mathis Jr. to get into the third, but that's what he did. Somewhat of a surprise here in Philadelphia, but Mike Tyson wins again. And we will be back with replays and interviews coming up after this, as Mike Tyson wins by TKO at 232 of the third round. Italians do not live by pasta alone. So to celebrate their many loves, the Olive Garden created a combination of the best of Italy. The Tuscan Feast, just $11.95 for a short time. Experience garlic shrimp, the way it's prepared along the Mediterranean. Chicken and spinach manicotti, together with a sirloin steak grilled Tuscan style. With free soup or salad and breadsticks, the Tuscan Feast, just $11.95. So much to celebrate, so much to love. Only at the Olive Garden. It doesn't matter what comes, French goes better in life, with mental special full of life. Nothing gets to you, staying fresh, staying cool, with mental fresh and full.
the next time you go to the dentist, he can improve the way you care for your teeth and gums without drilling or buzzing a thing. And all you have to do is this. Introducing Crest Plus Gum Care. It not only helps fight cavities, it can actually control the bacteria that harm your gums. It's the only toothpaste proven to help get your gums healthier. New Crest Plus Gum Care. It's just what the dentist ordered. Right now for a decision on the Mathis Tyson bout, let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of two minutes, 32 seconds in round number three. A referee in charge, Frank Cappuccino, reaches the count of 10. The winner by way of knockout, Mike Tyson. Right now, let's go inside the ring, a very crowded ring. Bobby Chez is standing by with Mike Tyson. Mike, Mike, did you did you expect him to come straight at you the way he did? Did you expect him to try and crowd you and walk into your I power? Expect, I expect him to do um, many things. I expect him to move around, run because he's able to do that, and I expect him um, to smother me because he's been very successful. But I'm very familiar with his style of fighting. I was raised, and I'm the best at that style of fighting. I knew every move he was making. That's how come when I when I did a couple of particular moves, he was he was stunned. He didn't expect them. We're gonna lead you into a replay here. I want you to call it for us when you see it. We're gonna put it up here on the monitor in a couple of seconds. Be a replay of the knockout. As you know, I made the move and I caught him. And I tried to catch him again. Then I caught him off the top of the head again. Then there's another one. It just glanced and really didn't hit him as hard as I anticipated to hit him. But I knew those punches would, would, would probably knock him out or uh, hurt him severely because he didn't see the punches coming. You, you promised the people here in Philly something they wouldn't forget. I'm sure they didn't forget it. They gave you a great greeting when you came in. They received you very warmly. What's next? Is it Frank Bruno in March? Well, all praise be to Allah. I bear witness there's only one God and Muhammad, the prophet. Peace and blessings upon him is his only prophet. And um, I'm just looking forward to doing well. I don't care who it is. I'm looking forward to fighting anybody. And I don't know about my outcome today, but you know I me, mean? I'm looking forward to fight for the title. I'm, I'm willing to fight any man. I'm not afraid of anyone. I believe I'm the best fighter in the world. And I like to say I love Monica, I love Gina, I love the little, our little baby Raina and Mikey. Mwah. All right, Mike, Family. I've been saying for three years the best heavyweight is finally back on the scene. God bless you. Good luck, pal. Thank you. Don, what is next, Don? Well, he said he would fight anybody. Right now, we got Frank Bruno lined up for March 16th. We'll have a formal announcement tomorrow morning at uh, around 10.30, and is, and is, uh, is on. He's going for the title now. He's undertaking the hard road to glory, to the undisputed championship of the world. And he's, you've seen him tonight. He had, it was good work for him, Bobby. The guy was smothering him, but he's, the, the mood was fantastic. Don, thanks again for a great promotion. We're going to go back to Kevin at ringside. Okay, Bobby, thank you very much.